Hi everybody, it's Jen Sheffer, and in this training tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the new Nearpod add-on in Google Slides to add interactive components to your static Google Slides and then share them with your students through Nearpod. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this seven functions of marketing lesson. I used to previously teach marketing and I'm going to add some interactive components to this lesson. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to go to add-ons and I'm going to click on Nearpod and then open Nearpod. If you don't have that option as of right now, you're going to click on get add-ons. And then from here, you're going to search Nearpod. And you'll see here, it says installed for me already, but you'll just go ahead and click through so that it becomes installed for you as an add-on. And then the next time you go into Nearpod, you're going, or excuse me, into add-ons, you're going to navigate down to Nearpod and then click on open Nearpod. So it'll say working and then it pops up here on the side. Um, and you're going to have access to a huge variety of content as well as activities and you can build these interactive lessons right from within slides. So if I clicked on search for all features, I can look at just the content, which would be audio, video, field trips, I have Nearpod 3D, simulations, uh, video, and then I could also just look for activities. And then only my activities will appear. I have quizzes, polls, open-ended questions, memory tests, matching pairs, graphing, calculator, uh, Flipgrid, and fill in the blanks. So let's just say I wanted to um, start with a Collaborate board. So I'm going to click on that option and my Collaborate board is going to open. So I'm going to say, how would you define marketing? So this is an excellent way to start flipping lessons. So this for me, um, when I previously taught marketing, this was one of the first things I taught was just getting students to understand that marketing isn't just selling. A lot of times that's what students thought. They thought it was exclusively selling. They didn't realize that marketing actually involves many different components. So you can see here, it, it um, changed to look like it would be interactive, but it's not going to be interactive in slides. It won't be interactive until we click on save and go to Nearpod. So let's just say at the end of this introductory lesson, I wanna add an open-ended question. So I could click on open-ended, it's going to open. And what surprised you? about the different functions of marketing. Now, one thing I want to mention here too, in terms of uh, flipping lessons and being able to divide our students up into groups and, and let them work independently on a lesson, um, adding video, or excuse me, adding audio instructions here can really help us achieve that goal of giving an assignment, giving a lesson, to our students and knowing that they're not gonna have any questions for me. They won't interrupt me when I'm with a, a group, uh, working with a group online or working with a group in the classroom because they have a full and complete understanding of the lesson objectives and goals. So I can make sure that they understand by adding audio um, instruction so I can just click on this I'd like to tell I'd like you to tell me what surprised you about marketing and and tell me about some of the misconceptions that you had that are now clarified because you've been introduced to lots of different components of marketing so I can say whatever I need to say I can give specific instructions I can elaborate and maybe my instruction right here this open-ended question just says be sure to click on the audio to listen to more detailed instructions, okay? So again, this might be um, more applicable for upper elementary and middle school, but this is going to free you up as a teacher to give your focus to the group of students that you're working with. That could be the group that's face-to-face -face in front of you in the classroom or kids that you're working with online if you're in that hybrid situation. So I can click on save. And then that audio is going to be there as well as the open-ended question and it's down at the bottom of the lesson okay um, so from there that's that's pretty much how you would add di different components so i can click at any time i can click on something i could add a quiz it's going to pull up my ability to add a quiz i give it a title i can add questions i can add additional answer options click save 
Um, I can have a timers on there as well. I can do the same thing. I, I can add a matching pairs game. I can add fill in the blanks, so on and so forth. So when I'm done, and again, this doesn't become interactive until I put it in Nearpod. So we're going to click on save and go to Nearpod. And it's going to say saving. And now this is where I can share it with my students either in a live mode if I'm with them in the classroom or if I'm doing this flipped, I can do this as student paste. And this is something that I could have my students be doing during an online station or they can do it in preparation for our next class meeting so that we can spend that time, that in-class time with having a deep discussion. And I think that is our um, goal is to really focus on deeper learning. So um, one thing I do want to mention is um, we need to change settings. If you did do student paste and um, there was a collaborate board, I'd get my code right here. I'd give it to the students. Um, require student responses and prevent skipping. I think that I have never seen that before, so I would really turn that on. If I was a teacher, I would not want my students to skip anything. I would, wa I would want to also um, require student um, responses. Um, and this tells me exactly when this particular lesson is valid from. Um, so I can click on this to adjust. Maybe I just want to give them tomorrow to do this 24 hour period. So that is a fantastic feature. I have full control over how long this lesson will be available for my students to complete. Um, I really like that feature. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention though, is if you had a collaborate board in a student paced lesson, I just wanna point this out to you as well. When you click on your profile picture here in your Nearpod, uh, dashboard. You're going to go into lesson settings, okay? You might get this um, warning when you add a collaborate board, but these settings here for, for your lessons, there's a couple things that we need to turn on. I'm going to do uh, another video about student notes in another video, but turn that on for now because I'm going to show you how that will work. Um, the other thing is um, you can allow students to resubmit answers in live participation mode. You can turn that on. Um, this one here, um, I'm going to just jump back up to this middle one here where it says show quiz and multiple choice question results in student paced mode. I would definitely turn that on. Students are going to get instant feedback on the assessments that they take, whether they're quizzes um, or other types of um, assessments. So I would definitely turn that on. It's really motivating for students when they get immediate feedback. And then this one here, enable collaborate board for student paced lessons. So it may or may not make sense to do a collaborate board if you're not live with your kids, but um, you might want to just turn it on just to be on the safe side. So it also says here that you can choose to pre-approve posts or delete posts by using the editable link from your post session report. So if you know your kids are capable of, you know, if they've been using Jamboard and they don't, um, they're, they've demonstrated their ability to um, be appropriate in the classroom, you may not necessarily need to approve comments, but I think m most of us, the large majority of us, do like the ability to approve comments before they get added to the Collaborate board. So, um, require student responses and prevent skipping in student paced mode. Um, this requires them to add a response before they can move on. I'm gonna turn that on as well. So I just wanted to mention this um, as I'm learning so much about this tool, which is so comprehensive and excellent. Um, so just keep in mind your lesson settings are up here. So I'm going to go back to Nearpod. When I click on the logo, I'm back here in my dashboard. And there is that seven functions lesson. It only has, like I said, that collaborate board and the um, open-ended question. Um, it's simple, but 
the more you do this, the more comfortable you'll get with it. And um, I think the more engaged your students will be, the more independent learners they will be, and it, the more it will allow you to spend in-class time on really meaningful tasks. So um, when you're ready to go, you can either do student paced or you could do live participation, work through with your students. And again, an excellent tool for flipping your lessons and um, I look forward to bringing you more uh, meaningful tutorials and um, I appreciate you watching and please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.